Hello everyone. Before we start the tutorial, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the Mill Express configuration. Visual CAD CAM Mill Express is an entry-level CAD and milling package tailored for sign makers, hobbyists, makers, and students. Ideal for getting started with CAM programming, Visual CAD CAM Mill Express includes 2D and 3D modeling, as well as 2 and 3-axis machining methods. Visual CAD CAM Mill Express is attractively priced for first-time buyers and shops with limited budgets. In Mill Express, you can perform the most common 2.5-axis toolpath methods, including facing, pocketing, profiling, engraving, and v-carving. Mill Express also offers entry-level 3-axis toolpath methods, including 3-axis horizontal roughing, also referred to as Z-level roughing, and 3-axis parallel finishing. Drilling is also included in Mill Express. Drilling methods include standard drilling, deep drilling, countersink drilling, and brake chip drilling. Mill Express is just one of the CAM modules that run as a plug-in inside of Visual CAD. Other modules include Turn, Nest, Art, Profile Nest, and our own G-Code Editor. If you need additional milling features, Mill Express includes in-product upgrades that are tailored specific to your license key. For more information, you can visit the Visual CAD CAM Mill Express product page, chat with us online, or just give us a call. Okay, let's get started with the tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Visual Cam Express. Express is our entry level uh, cam uh, plugin for Visual CAD. So we're going to run Visual CAD and drag this over. And initially, if you're watching this, you may not have a, a Visual Cam license yet. So when Visual CAD Cam loads for the first time, it'll come up with this dialog and allows you to do a couple of things. You can run Freemill, which is our free milling plugin. However, it is free, but it is uh, somewhat limited. Uh, you can run the CAM demo, and when you get your license uh, activation code, you can activate your product here. So we're gonna run the CAM demo. And from this dialog, from the mill module, you have different modules that you can run. From the mill module, we're gonna select the express configuration and then pick mill. Okay, so Visual CAD CAM displays, and uh, this, this dialog on your left is actually the CAM, Visual CAM plugin, so let's turn that off just for a second. So right here, we're looking at uh, Visual CAD. This is a free uh, CAD program that you can download uh, anytime and use it uh, with no restrictions. And I'll just give a really uh, brief run through of what you can do uh, in Visual CAD. Up here, we got a, a ribbon bar. Uh, we got the home uh, ribbon bar where you can do your file maintenance uh, commands, open, save, save as template, print, etc. And then you have a plugins pane uh, where you can manage your uh, various uh, MechSoft plugins. And you see Visual Cam here uh, as one of those plugins that are currently loaded. And then, of course, you have your options. Uh, you can uh, control uh, all aspects of your drawing uh, inside Visual CAD. Okay, so this display tab, uh, you can modif modif you know, modify your view, pan, rotate, those uh, types of commands. You can orient your display, uh, right view, front view, etc. And then you can change your display type, your mode, uh, shaded, wireframe, etc. And you can control the visibility of your construction planes, viewports, etc. Then we have a uh, modeling aids tab, which will uh, you can help. Uh, by selecting things, you can filter uh, mask or filter different selections. Uh, you can lock, lock and unlock various geometries, control your construction plane, and then also uh, you can set up a background image uh, if you want. We also have an extensive curve modeling set where you can uh, draw uh, a multitude of curve types and also uh, curve editing tools as well. We also have a surface modeling tab where you can do basic surface modeling and editing, 
the same for uh, basic solids in editing and meshes uh, in editing. And you can also uh, dimension your drawing and perform analysis. And then also in the active viewport, you have viewport commands, uh, zoom, controls, uh, you know, undo, 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 redo of uh, different zoom uh, orientations. And then down at the bottom here, you have your status bar, uh, displays your coordinate of the cursor, your units, and then also uh, object snaps for snapping to different types of objects. You got your properties manager and your layers manager, and you can pin those to the sidebar as you see. Here's the properties manager, and here's the layer manager. Okay, let's go ahead and open the part uh, for this short demonstration. And we already have it loaded up here in our recent documents. And what we have here is a, um, a mechanical, uh, pris a somewhat prismatic part. Uh, in that you have uh, straight walls, uh, you have pockets and holes, uh, things of that nature, and you do have some some curvature uh, around here that we're going to use uh, some three-axis uh, uh, strategies to machine. Okay, so let's also you can change the the viewport if you want to do multiple views. Uh, you can uh, take a look at it in multiple views. So we're going to do one ISO view, and then let's go ahead and load the mill module. So we'll go to the Home tab, drop down the Visual Cam menu, and pick Mill. And uh, this is uh, the milling module where you have the machining browser here at the top and the machining objects browser here below. And let's go ahead and load a tool library real quick. We'll load our inch, inch library, so we got 56 tools loaded. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, express machining on this part. So we're going to run through the basics of setting up this part uh, for machining. We're going to start uh, at the program tab and work our way from left to right. We're going to define the machine. And in the express configuration, uh, the number of axes is one option for three axis, and that's the same for both two and three axis uh, machining jobs. Okay, next we're going to set up our post processor. We're going to select post. And here you can see that you can set your current post processor. We'll just go ahead and set that to a Haas controller here, and we'll just skip down here. We're going to use a, a, a NC extension, and you can add additional extensions if you like. I'll pick OK there. So we got our machine set to three axis, our post set to Haas. Now, the next item on uh, the uh, machine setup portion of the program tab is to orient your part. If you, when you open your part, if it's not oriented the way you want it for machining, you can use this command and you can automatically orient your part based on the direction uh, that you want to machine. So our part is already oriented uh, how we want it to be machined on the uh, machine bed. So we're going to go over to the stock command. So in ex the express configuration, you have two stock types. You have a box stock and a part box stock. The difference being is that in, in the box stock, you can give it the exact dimensions uh, of the stock that you wish. Okay, we have our machine and our post uh, defined. Uh, if your part doesn't load in the correct orientation that you want it for machining, uh, meaning the z-axis direction for the spindle, uh, you can use the orient part command and actually automatically move your part around uh, in different orientations. But our part uh, is oriented the way we want it. So we're going to skip that. And then we'll go over to the stock menu. And in the express configuration, you have two stock types, a box stock and a part box stock. Now, the box stock type is you can just load uh, I mean, define the length, width, and height of your exact box uh, that you want to use. In the part box stock, you can use the extents of the part, and then you can add material in the X, uh, in the Y, in the Z. So we're going to use a box stock, and we're going to 
select the copy model bounding box and that's going to tell you the exact dimensions of your part. So our parts uh, about two inches long, a little over two inches wide and a little over three quarters of an inch high. So we're going to do copy model bounding box and then we're going to set this uh, the length we're going to set to 2.25 and the width will set to 2.25 and then the height will set that to one inch. So that's going to be the size of our box stock and we'll pick OK. And there's uh, icons here at the bottom of the machining browser where you can uh, turn off various items and uh, we defined our stock so now we can turn that uh, box stock on. And you see that we currently have uh, a, a bitmap image display. So let's turn that off. OK, so here is our box stock. And let's go over to the preferences and let's change the uh, display transparency of the stock model. OK, let's turn that up to um, somewhat transparent. So here you can see uh, the stock in the part uh, inside the stock box. Now, you may want to orient the stock in relation uh, to the part. So that's the next item on the list. We'll select, uh, we'll select align, and then we're going to go align stock. And we're going to uh, align the stock to the bottom of the part, flush to the bottom. And then we're going to uh, center, center in the X and the Y, and we'll pick OK. So here, if we go to the multi-quad viewport, you'll see that uh, we have it aligned, uh, flush to the bottom, uh, centered uh, in the X, uh, in the Y. Okay, the next item, uh, if also if your part wasn't in the correct position, in other words, uh, if you if you want your uh, world origin to be aligned with a particular point of your part or of your stock, you can use the set world coordinate system uh, to do that automatically. So let's do that. So we're, we're going to this. What we're doing in here is we're moving the geometry to a specific point and making that point the world origin. So we're going to set it to the stock box and then we'll set it to uh, the lowest Z and the southwest corner. So what this is going to do is it's going to actually move the geometry. Uh, it's going to move this point over to the world origin. So you see there, everything shifted over. So now your stock box is at the world origin. Now, if you can leave it like this, and when you uh, zero out your machine, you can zero it out at the bottom left corner of your stock box. Now, if you don't want to uh, uh, have that as your machine origin, you can set it to another location and you can do that with the work zero. And we're going to set it to the stock box and let's put it at the southwest uh, top corner. So this is the point. While this is the location of the part, you know, in the CAD file in the, in the world origin, this is going to be our location for uh, uh, measuring our coordinates. And this will be the zero point that we're going to use uh, on the on the machine bed. So let's pick generate. And we'll turn that on. There's a toggles down here. We'll turn on uh, the triad. And this is our work zero. And this is our world origin. And then also you can define a material uh, for your stock. Currently it's set uh, to wood, which is the default. And you can set that to anything you want. Uh, typically this is probably going to be an aluminum part. We'll set it to aluminum 6061 and pick OK. And the material comes into play uh, when you uh, start assigning uh, feeds and speeds for your tools. You can use the internal calculator to help you uh, locate uh, feeds and speeds values based on this material. We'll pick OK there. OK, we've got our machining setup defined. We have our stock defined. We have a work zero. So now we're going to get into actual uh, machining operations. In the express configuration, you have uh, five uh, two and a half axis operations that you can use. Uh, you have facing, pocketing, profiling, engraving, uh, and V carving. In three axis, 
you have two uh, operation types in the express uh, entry level configuration. You have a roughing operation, a three axis horizontal roughing or Z level roughing. And you also have a parallel finishing. And we'll show you both of those uh, in just a second. And you can also uh, drill holes. Now, drilling is not just drilling. You can do a number of drill types. So we'll show you that as well since we have some holes here. Okay, so let's start off uh, by doing a three and a half axis um, horizontal roughing operation to clear uh, the material out uh, of this part. So we're going to pick two axes. I mean, we're going to pick horizontal roughing operation. We'll pick that from the three axis menu. And this is the uh, horizontal roughing uh, dialog. Everything is contained in this dialog that you need uh, to set for the operation. For the control geometry, uh, this will contain the tool path to a certain area. We don't want it contained. We want everything that the tool can find to remove uh, to go ahead and remove that. So we don't need to put anything here. For the tool, we'll go ahead and leave it set to uh, 3 8 flat mill. And for the feeds and speeds, we'll go ahead. We have feeds and speeds assigned to our tools already. We'll go ahead and make sure they're loaded from the tool. Clearance plane, we'll leave it set to automatic. And you can see the clearance plane on the screen here. And for the cut transfer, this is where the transfer motions will uh, be performed at. And we'll set that to the clearance plane. So for cut parameters for horizontal roughing, you have a tolerance. And you, here you can see uh, what the tolerance means in three axes. And you have a stock definition. You can leave a certain amount of stock. Well, so we'll leave 25 thousandths. And we're going to do an offset cut pattern, a mixed cut direction. We're going to start on the outside of the part. And we're going to do a step over 25% of the tool diameter. And you can also set uh, uh, cavity pocket regions patterns and core facing regions patterns. For cavity pocket regions, like in here, this is we considered a cavity. Outside would be considered a core. So we'll leave those set to offset on both sides. OK, so for cut levels, uh, how deep do you want the horizontal roughing to take in, in each cut level? So we're going to set that to 50% of the tool diameter. And we're not going to uh, contain the tool path in the Z level. We're going to let it uh, cut as much as it can uh, of the stock. So for the engage and retract, we'll leave it set. Uh, let's do a, well, we'll leave it set to path since we're going to be entering from the outside. And this is a roughing. And let's just generate this and see what it looks like. OK, so here, let's go in a multi viewport here. So here is our roughing operation. OK, and here you can see the multiple uh, Z levels that are being uh, used. And you can also display uh, each of the levels individually. You can uh, load the Z level display dialog and work through those. And it shows you each cut level. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at the cut material simulation for this uh, horizontal roughing uh, operation. So we'll go over to the Simulate tab, and we'll select the operation. And we'll slow this down a little bit, and we'll pick Play. Slow that up just a little bit. And let's go ahead and turn the toolpath off so we can see it uh, a little bit better. And we can also, you don't have to wait till all the way to the end. You can pick pause and then to end. And it'll show you the completed uh, cut material simulation. So this is the roughing uh, operation. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that these uh, irregular edges you see here, those are just display artifacts. They're not uh, in your actual uh, G code that you post. And this is due to the fact that in the express configuration, you have the lower resolution uh, uh, cut material simulation model. In higher configurations, you have a, a more uh, smoother display as far as the simulating. OK. 
So our cut model um, is a little bit hard to see because the color that we had chosen is similar to the background color. So let's go ahead and change the, the stock colors. So we'll go into the preferences, uh, stock, and for the cut stock, we'll go ahead and change that. Uh, for uh, roughing, we'll go ahead and change that, say, to this color here, and we'll pick OK. So now you see it changed the cut stock uh, to that color. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, parallel finishing uh, on this part. So we'll go to the Program tab. We'll go to 3-axis Parallel Finishing. And uh, again, uh, we're not going to select anything here. For a tool, we're going to select a, let's see, let's select a, let's select a ball mill. Let's see here. Let's see if we have any. Okay, corner radius mills. We don't have a corner radius. So let's go ahead and set create a corner radius mill. We'll set this to 0 0.375. And corner radius, we'll just leave that. We'll leave everything else the same and just save as a new tool. And we'll go ahead and use the uh, corner radius tool for this operation. Feeds and speeds, we'll load those from the tool. Same clearance plane, cup parameters. The stock will be zero since we're doing a finishing operation. We're going to do a mixed cut direction. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom, meaning the lowest uh, direction in Y. And then we're going to have a step over, uh, say, 10%. And for Z containment, we're not going to contain it. And for entry and exit, we'll go ahead and do a, um, a radial entry and exit in a straight uh, linear for the cut connections. Let's generate that. So let's look at the parallel finishing. So here you see uh, it did a parallel finishing operation across uh, the entire part. So let's go ahead and simulate that. And this is parallel finishing. Do a pause and to end. Okay, so it looks like our tool is a little bit large. Let's go ahead and do that with a smaller tool. And we'll set that instead of 375, let's set that to 1 8. And the corner radius, we'll set that to 0 2. And for the length, we'll do that 3. We'll set that to 1.5. Okay, so let's corner radius mill dash 0.125 diameter. Okay, so let's save that as a new tool. And we'll pick OK. So we're going to use that tool instead, and let's run it. Okay, so you see you got a nice uh, finer step over, uh, and you'll get a better surface finish here. Let's go ahead and run that. And we'll pick pause and to end. Okay. Well, even in that color, it's not really clear. So let's go ahead and change that color again. Let's go to stock. We'll do a cut stock. Let's set that to, <clears throat> let's see. Let's set that to this color here. Okay, so that's a little bit better. So here you see your, your uh, parallel finishing operation. Now in finishing, typically you want to go in one direction and then uh, crosswise to get a good finish. So we're going to make a copy of this operation. And we'll paste it. And we'll change the cut direction to 90 degrees and generate. So you see it, it does the cut direction in 90 degrees from the previous one. So let's go ahead and simulate that. Again, these uh, vertical artifacts are only in the simulation model. They're not uh, shown in the actual uh, cut model, the actual part that you cut. Let's do a pause 
and then two n. Okay, so now we got uh, horizontal roughing. We got a parallel finishing and another parallel finishing. Let's go ahead and uh, drill these holes. So let's go ahead and select holes and then pick drill. And we'll, for the uh, geometry, we're going to pick uh, select holes on flat areas. And we have a flat area here, there, and there. And it automatically selects the holes. And for a tool, we're going to use a drill. Let's see if we have a drill tool in here. Yes, we do. We're going to use a one quarter inch drill. Pick OK. And for the feeds and speeds, we'll load those from the tool. The clearance plane, a couple parameters. <clears throat> in drilling, you can do a standard drill. Let's move this over just a little. You can do a standard drill, a deep drill. With deep drilling, you can set a peck increment. You can do a countersink drill if you want to countersink uh, the hole. You can do a break chip, which is similar to a deep drill where you have uh, uh, a step increment. Uh, and it actually pulls all the way out and pulls the chips out of the hole. And then we have uh, four different user defined drills and we'll get into those in another video. So we're going to do a deep drill and we'll set the increment to 0.1. And we'll start uh, location of cut points. It's at the top of the cut. And we'll set that to 0 0.5. And we'll add the tooltip. And let's go ahead and generate those. So here is our drilling operation. So let's go ahead and simulate that. It looks like we got our drill bit a little bit big. Let's go ahead and change the drill bit. And we'll change that to a 1 8 inch drill. OK. And change that there. And we'll generate that. And we'll do a simulate. OK, there we go. So now we got our part machined. We got it roughed out. We got it finished out. We got holes drilled. So that's it. Uh, the basics of um, machining and the express configuration of visual mill. Thank you. Have a good day.